Would you like to know why Cloud Architect, Enterprise Architect, Security Architect, and all other architect salaries are so high? If so, this video is for you. My name's Mike Gibbs. I'm an enterprise architect who's been every other kind of architect you can think of for the last 25 years. And I've trained architects that work at every major company in the world that you can think of. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about why cloud architects, enterprise architects, security architects get paid so much. In fact, the average uh, architect in any one of these roles, salary is approximately $200,000 a year. With many principal architects, distinguished architects, enterprise architects, chief architects earning far more than $500,000 a year. So why is it? Why is it that cloud architect pay is so high or enterprise architect pay or security architect? So there's a couple of rationale behind this and we're gonna make sure you understand all of it. The predominant thing is there is a shortage of qualified architects. The architect role takes a combination of skills, executive skills, business skills, and technology knowledge. And finding those three skill sets in a single person is near impossible. And we'll talk more about those skills and their value later, but understand we have to look at the supply and the demand for these roles. Now, organizations demand architects at such a high rate because the architect is responsible for making sure the organization gets business value out of the technology, designs the technology plan or blueprint for the organization, and make sure the systems are designed to work and meet the organization's needs. Now, that means the architect role is a planning role, which takes a whole lot of knowledge and a whole lot of coordination to achieve. Architecture is not like engineering, which is a doing role where people believe, build it. Architecture is all about the plan. So let's go look at a supply and demand curve of cloud architects, enterprise architects, and security architects, and we'll compare them to another career like software development. So here we have a supply and demand curve. And what you'll notice is we've got uh, a given level of demand, which you can see by, represented by this line, and a level of supply, which will be represented by this line. Now where supply and demand intersect will be the price or the salary of the professional. So I'm gonna start with the software engineer. I think software engineers are awesome, but let's talk about the real economics of the software engineer. Everybody was told learn to code for the most part for the last 25 years and as long as I can remember. So that means there is a huge supply of people that can code. Now let's talk about what's gonna keep a software developer's salary from going up too much. It doesn't matter where you write that code. Whether you are in Cameroon, whether you're in Cambodia, whether you're in Chicago, whether you're in Cape, Con Cape Town, or whether you're in California, you can write your code. So with software development and the ability to do it from anywhere in the world, we have a huge percentage of the population that can write code. And that's why we're typically dealing with a fairly low salary for software engineers compared to other types of professionals because anybody can do it anywhere in the world. Not that it's not a hard skill, not that it's not anything, just that there's a lot of people. Now let's bring this to an architecture role. So the first thing we have to understand with an architecture role is it's a design, planning, executive, and business role. So immediately, just related to system design we, we, or system or planning, we already have very few people that can automatically do this role. So just that, you can see, would be a massive improvement in uh, the person's salary because of the shortage of the personnel. But we're not just talking about system design in the architect. We're also talking about obtaining the requirements from the executives, being able to lead an architecture team, being able to drive the response to an RFI, RFP, RFQ, being able to sell your billion dollar technology solution, being able to influence the C-suite to the board managing stakeholders. And you can see by the time you're done, almost no one knows how to do these things. 
which is why the average cloud architect pay is $200,000, but there's many architect pays specifically for strategic architects that go way over a half a million dollars a year. So the shortage is the big driver of the salary, but it's also related to the skill. And the shortage of the skill is it's planning. And most people don't know how to plan. Most people know how to do. And most people are trained in how to do and how to do does not teach you how to plan. But let's talk about the impact of a planning role and salary versus the impact of a doing role. The CEO is a planning role. It is a strategist that designs a strategy to make that organization successful. They plan the number of employees they have. They plan which markets they're going to. And the CEO earns far more than the person at the front line, the front line employee. Now, let's talk about someone that would design a shopping mall, an actual architect. The architect designs the blueprint, uh, what it's going to look like, how it's going to attract shoppers, and all those other cool things. And the architect, for better or for worse, and I didn't say this is right, but the architect may get paid 10, 20, 100 times more than the construction workers that actually build that shopping mall they design. Now, the key is in order to design a shopping mall, you need a level of education and a level of knowledge. You can't just do some construction and expect to fix it, which means you need to go to school. You need to invest in an education, and it could be a costly education. So guess that what that means. Whether we're dealing with a cloud architect, an AI architect, or a security architect, they're going to have to get training and an education to do the job. They can't just do 10,000 projects and expect to know how to do the architecture job. And trust me, I've interviewed people with 10 and 20 years experience in engineering roles, and they need to be cross-trained to be architects because planning and doing are generally very different skills. So that means there's less people. There's a barrier to entry to actually doing these things, and that's going to further exacerbate the problem of short supply, which now, again, increases the salary. So the next thing is executive skills. The architect is an executive. We need to be able to meet with the C-suite, understand the needs for their business. We need to meet with key stakeholders across their organization, map out business processes and work with them to optimize business processes. We're going to have to get uh, a build and lead an architecture team to evaluate the client's turn technology systems, for example. And that could take a team of 15 to 50 people several months to map it all out. And then we're going to need to lead a team of people that we can actually design the architecture because no one architect is going to design an, a big enterprise architecture. We'll need security architects, network architects, AI architects, data scientists, software developers, application architects, DevOps engineers, uh, you name it. We're going to need a team for architecture. We've got to lead that team. We are going to be giving lots of presentations as architects. We're going to be building business cases and we're going to be working hard to enhance our clients' business performance. Now, that means executive skills. Executive skills demand executive salaries. And business acumen or business knowledge is one of the most critical skills for the architect. And let's talk about jobs with business acumen that pay very well. Let me share this with you. So here we can see the executive salaries of the architect compared to some other uh, you know, junior executives at some of our technology companies. We have a principal solutions architect at Amazon earning about 372 a year. It's about 378 for Microsoft for a principal solutions architect. And we're dealing with about $508,000 a year per average for a solutions architect at Google, a little lower with Oracle at about $300,000 a year. But this is still executive pay. Now, remember that solutions architects, as a rule, are the most junior of the architect roles. And we get into bigger architect roles like chief architects and enterprise architects that obviously pays more. But I want you to also look at the salary for non-technical professionals that are executives who work in the technology industry. Look at the senior director at uh, Cisco Systems that on average earns $528,000 a year, or the senior director at Palo Alto Networks that earns on average $540,000 a year, or even an IT director at NVIDIA at, uh, at $555,000 or $4,000 per year. So what you're saying here is, architects get executive pay because we have to do so much executive work and we have to have executive skills. The, and there's one last reason why companies are willing to pay architects almost anything. What if I told you that 70% of the time an organization invests in technology and gets no business benefit? None of them. And uh, 
I want you to think about that. So the architect is there to align the company's people, processes, and technology for maximum business performance. So if you really think about it, so let's think about having a team of 30 architects at $500,000 a year. Guess what? That's about $15 million a year architect pay. Isn't that better than spending $500 billion or I'm sorry, $500 million on a system and getting nothing for it? So because the architects are there to drive transformation and drive business performance, it's a big impact. Increase in organization's revenue by a lot with your architecture. It doesn't matter what you ask for in terms of pay. Decrease in organization's operating expenses by optimization and automation. It doesn't matter what you ask to be paid because you could be providing a half a billion dollars of business value for your measly 500K salary by comparison. And 500K is not measly, but it's measly to the business compared to the hundreds of millions of dollars that you can protect them for or the big impact a good architect can on an enterprise organization. I hope at this point it's clear to you why cloud architects, enterprise architects, AI architects, security architects pay is so high. There's nobody that can do it. It's an expensive set of ex executive skills to typically develop, and uh, it takes planning skills versus doing skills, and most people are trained on how to do versus how to plan. Now, if you'd like to become a cloud architect, enterprise architect, security architect, or AI architect, got a free webinar every single week that covers one of these roles. We'll go over what we do in these architecture roles, the skills you need, and how to get hired. These uh, webinars are completely free. Come join us. We'll even spend 60 to 90 minutes answering any kind of uh, architecture career questions you may have because we want you to have the best cloud architect, enterprise architect, AI architect career, whatever career it is you love because I love architecture careers and I've been an architect for about 25 years. Register for one of these free webinars. It's in the description of this video. In the description, in this video, we have free guides on how to win the interview, uh, how to get your first cloud architect, enterprise architect, or AI architect job. So check them out. It's all free. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your architecture career. And leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought of the video, what your goals are in your career. I'd love to hear from you. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you soon on another webinar or video. Take care.